Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You already know this. this. We're just changing one world at a time. Hey guys, welcome to the Paradise Paradox. Uh, in this amazing broadcast, you're hanging with me, Aaron Battle, uh, a guy talking about stuff that he probably doesn't know about. But um, jokes aside, you'll um, if you follow me, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so don't worry about it. Uh, it'll all make sense later. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at BattleAZ. Um, if you're checking us out online on YouTube, you can pretty see that I'm in my mobile studio. Got a couple new mics. I got a new camera on the way. And uh, it's cool because I've been traveling for a couple years. So now I can get some better gear and I can get set up and uh, we can keep sending out the Paradise Paradox mobile. So today you're going to hang with me and listen to a few of my, my thoughts, a few ideas and uh, a few things that are, that are important to me, a few life lessons that I've learnt now that I'm a, a chavo ruco, which is a Mexican term for a young old guy. Um, so I don't know, I guess that's all relative as well. I'll get to that. Um, so today I want to talk about success, being successful, uh, about inspiration, finding your way through life, maybe life purpose, the meaning of life. Um, I'm just going to have some fun, okay? I'm just going to talk about, like I said, a few things that that are important to me that I've learned in my journey, hopefully uh, give you guys some value and uh, you know, give away a couple of my of my secrets, a couple of the, the things that I know, that I do, that I think, that I get away with um, – in my in my life, so you know this is on the internet, so it's complete open source. So you guys can uh, can jump on, share it with your friends. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Paradise Paradox. Jump on the website www.theparadiseparadox.com. You can see that we're selling some T-shirts at the top, PP T-shirts. Um, there's a couple of different designs up there at the moment. Plenty more designs to come. So um, you know, check in. Real money. It's probably one of my favorites. We've also got I Want Disclosure, um, which is Aliens, Chutsunitsa on a tie-dye design. Pretty cool. So to kick it off, the first secret to success is that it's a choice. You can choose to be successful. Nobody told me that. I've always been striving to be successful because success was always over there. Success was always something you got after you did something. Um, in hindsight, you realize that success is a journey. Any satisfaction that's given to you that you receive via goals, it's uh, it's short-lived. You, Unless you're enjoying the, the satisfaction of the journey, of the process, then uh, once you receive or complete, then what? You're back to the start again. You're back to being in a state of non-success. So it's important to dream big, really big, stupid big. Um, I, I heard once a while ago, your goals should be so big that when you tell people, you make them laugh. Now, I don't know if they need to be laughable, but... They need to be big enough that people don't believe that you actually believe you're going to complete your goal. And if they can see that you're enjoying the process of your goal, you want it to be big because you want to live a long, big life chasing these goals. And maybe it can be like little goals towards a big goal. 
But as soon as you start isolating your goals or making them um, so, so tight, then you realize that you really have no freedom to actually let life roll itself out. You, um, you set yourself up for failure and I'll get to ex- expectations of goals later. So when you, when you decide that you need to, um, to set goals in your life and I think most people set goals as a kid, as kids, you know, they're like, you know, I want to achieve this and that's, that's very good. It's, it's important to learn that skill. Um, I don't think I did that until maybe, you know, later in high school. I was just cruising. I didn't think about it. No one really told me that I needed to to set my mind to something. And your mind and setting that to a goal is like, it's like the muscle that you need to work for it to get stronger. If you're not setting goals and achieving something in that process of moving forward towards something, then really you're just watching the movie of your life and not directing it. The reason why I decided to talk about success today is because I realized that to really know something, you need to be able to teach it. I know we're all students and teachers at the same time, um, but in order for me to know what success is and how to be successful, I need to be able to teach it. And maybe this format isn't exactly... um, perfect but I know that I at least myself watching this back I'm going to get a lot out of it I'm going to only learning from myself so here we go on me trying to teach you success okay so I'm not going to teach you how to make a million bucks I'm not going to teach you how to obtain the the Ferrari or Lamborghini um, I'm just going to teach you, tell you a couple stories in my life and a few ideas so that you can kind of see where I'm at. Because the thing is, we're all successful already right now, irrespective of where you are with your goals, where you, where you are with your life, what you're up to. You are successful You are the only person living your experience, living your life. There's no one else that can tell you how to be you, how to do what you do. So I guess that's secret number two. The fact that everyone is already 100% successful based on the limits of their reality. Now, here we're going to go into a, a, a new thought. The limits of your reality. Now, if it's your reality, who's setting the limits? You are. Because there's only one person in your life playing your game. And no one else can be successful unless you're successful in your experience. Otherwise, You're looking to the external. You're looking at other people and you're saying they're successful because whatever you think, but they're successful and I am not them. Therefore, I am not successful. The thing is, you are never going to be someone else. You are never going to be not you. So unless you realize that being successful is being you, then you pretty much doomed, you're stuffed, you're um, paddling up the wrong creek. My version of success is not and never will be the same as yours. My version of success isn't exactly what the collective world might see as successful. Yeah, sure, Instagram I, um, I, I rent a nice car, I go stay at a few nice hotels, I hang out with some nice girls and I'm taking photos and I put an Instagram 
externally, people that don't know who I really am could say, Aaron Battle, he's quite successful. And I guess in their world, I would be. I am. But that doesn't mean that I think I am. Because success is a journey of my own of my own will, a journey of my own goals and my own expectations of myself and my own necessities. Again, I'll get to that. So, um, just before I go any further, I, I'll let you know what happened today. Um, I was invited. I've been complaining that I had a sore back for the last couple years. And, uh, one of my cousins invited me to to go and see an alternative doctor. Now, I had an idea, but I didn't realize that um, alternative this alternative doctor, um, her methods are, well, I'll just tell you what it is. I was stung by six bees today, and I'm talking real bees, like, the ones that make honey, the ones that buzz, uh, you know, the ones that sting you and die and hurt when they sting you. And, I mean, I've heard of, um, of like, Indian people doing that kind of thing. I've heard of um, friends suggesting, hey, you know, you're in Mexico. You should go try to track one of these places down. And it's funny how the universe just delivers when you're not expecting and uh, so this morning, we went and got stung by a whole lot of bees. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit inflamed. It's late, so I'm feeling a little bit tired. Um, if you're interested in how that went down, um, check out one of our future episodes. Not out yet. So I suggest subscribe, and uh, then you won't miss it. Okay. Now, the last secret I gave you was that success is based on the limits of your reality. So now we need to think about realities and multiple realities. Um, I'll, I'll make it easy. Let's think about a dog versus cat reality. You know, different necessities, different, uh, different goals in life, you know, totally different experience. An elephant reality versus a goldfish. Different way of life, different things that fall important. Um, a human versus in a tree. Now, it's all just life. It's all just consciousness trying to live out their experience. But when you think about it like that, you realize, who am I? I am a human experience. I am the Aaron Battle experience. You are your own experience. And we're housed inside you or a human machine, your human body. You're trapped, at least for this lifetime, inside a human vessel. And, I mean, that's, um, is that real? Like, I just said it, but think about it. You are you living your life inside your body. That's pretty straightforward, right? But then you try and work out where are you separated? What exactly are you and not? Am I my body? Am I my mind? Am I my bag of emotions and we've all been set or put or born out of into this classroom a very big classroom a, a massive spaceship classroom that we call earth now I've traveled at least these last couple of years but I feel like I've traveled my whole life I like to travel, I like to meet new people, I like to visit new countries, and I find that as far as I can go from home, 
I always seem to find people that know me. I find friends. I make new friends. I find families, I find family members, um, and then I find home, wherever I happen to be at that moment. It's like this is part of being, part of being comfortable wherever you are, knowing that you're just living that experience. You're being successful, living your experience in your body, in your reality. So, and you're the only one there. I, I can't, I can't be you. No one can. So, um, personally, my mission in life is to get lost because it's only when you get lost that you realize who you are. There's no, um, there, there's nothing relative to base yourself on. There's nothing relative to, to judge yourself. And here's where you shouldn't judge anything or other people as well, because there's a little trick here. Um, I'm going to talk about the double slit experiment, not now, but later. And I put a link in the notes if you're interested in checking out what it is to be the observer, to judge something. Because as soon as you observe something, you automatically judge it and you automatically make it that. You label it with whatever name you're going to call that thing. And then in your reality, that becomes what you've labeled it as, limiting all the possibility that it could have been right then and there in your reality. And the trick is people do this without thinking. Fair enough, we all do it. But we do this so much that we start judging other people as well. And and again, the the joke is on the the person judging because they can only see themselves. I'll explain. Uh, With a simple thing like height. There's people that are tall. There's people that are short. There's people taller than other people, people shorter than other people. So when somebody walks into a room and it's full of tall people, what do you see? You can imagine a short person, right? But what happens if everyone's really tall, like abnormally really tall, And the person that walked in is normal or relatively average. Then why are you thinking of a short person, vice versa? In Australia, I'm probably average height, um, 5'10", average height. In Mexico, I'm tall, much taller than possibly the average height. Not sure what that is. So, you know, and being tall is cool, but I'm, not, but I'm not tall. I'm just average height. But relative to the collective community or the collective sample, you change depending on what the environment's going to judge you as, where you fit in, where you choose to be. So, you know, this is something that we, we do all the time as a, as a collective human race. We can't help it. But it's important to know that when you do, when you do judge somebody, and you know, I'm using a very simple example, but there's much, I mean, it's a big world. You can judge people for many things. And when you do, you limit what that could be in your reality. It's like you give it a full stop. Um, I'll give you another example, personal example. Now, here in Mexico, I've got, um, I would consider alternative projects, not a standard job. Now, the problem with that is people look at me and they would say relative to the average person working, it would appear that I am lazy. It would appear that Aaron doesn't work. 
that Aaron doesn't do anything. And um, obviously people that, that are close to me or know, know what I'm up to obviously know that I'm, I'm quite a busy, dedicated person. However, people that don't understand the type of work that I do or the type of lifestyle that I have, they wouldn't be able to understand. Their reality doesn't allow them to understand what it is that I actually do. Therefore, in their reality, they see me as something else. They see me as what they would consider themselves if they lived my life, which would be lazy, which would be uh, someone that doesn't work. Now, the funny thing here is they've shown me all their cards. They've shown me that they're incapable of living a life outside their life. Makes sense. They're incapable of imagining something they're unable to imagine. So we need to stop judging people. We need to stop limiting them because in doing that, we only limit ourselves. Um, and the thing is, everyone seems to be pretty certain of what they, what they think, what they, what they believe, what they experience. But when, when you realize that we're really trapped or bound to, the, to our own personal limits, which are limits on our reality – then we find that, um, you know, we're not seeing the whole picture. The whole picture could be my future goals just outside my reality. So if we're limiting everything, then what we could possibly want or desire in our life might never be possible due to our, our own beliefs. And this comes to like expectations as well because um, on the other on the other side of believing something and being trapped by our beliefs by our, by our beliefs we have expectations of ourselves and other people and this also limits things because sometimes we don't understand the process that we that we have ourselves let alone other people the process of the way people work is, can be very different so if we have expectations of a certain action or expectations of a certain event and it doesn't quite go that way, then we can only set ourselves up for disappointment. And this is disappointing because to feel disappointment is not a desired state. You're not very – you're not your premium, maximum – person when you're disappointed you're not going to function your best therefore how do you expect the best if you're not feeling the best where if you left your expectation or you let it go you say you know what i'm going to enjoy the success in my journey without putting a certain expectation on what it needs to be or look like or the result then you're, you're not limiting yourself to just that. And maybe it turns out well, maybe it doesn't. But the point is, you're not disappointed. You accept it. And if it's not quite where you want it to be, you keep moving and you enjoy the success of that journey. Otherwise, you party because you got something so much better. So different, I didn't expect that, but it was better. Things just turn out the way they need to turn out sometimes. I'm going to touch on something interesting now. Something that, an idea that was given to me back in my teens and I thought was really, really cool. I thought, this, this is it. This is the key to success. Fake it till you make it. Fake it. Until you make it. And it's like, it sounded really cool back then, you know, back when I was 18. So I get it. I get, I know what I need to do now. I just need to put it together, be that long enough, fake it, show it 
until that becomes my reality. And although I find some truth in that, um, when I was 18, I did not have the life experience and the understanding of my own reality. I had no idea of my belief systems. I mean, as in, I didn't choose them. I was given belief systems and I was trying to operate in a world which essentially wasn't mine, as in character-wise. Certain things that they just, just rubbed me the wrong way. But that's just the way it was, right? So I'm going to fake it until I make it. Now, um, that's an expectation that's setting yourself up for disappointment. Now that I'm in my 30s, I realize why would I, me, why would I want to fake anything? Why can't I just be what I am? exactly how I need to be. Why can't I just keep it real? So um, I understand this idea of like classic interview mentality. You're going for a job, a nice job, you know, your dream job. So you go out and maybe you, you buy new suits or you buy a new cologne. You buy, there's, there's a process in that. I want to be better than what I am right now so that I must get that job. I want to increase all the possibility of obtaining this job. So I need to step it up. And you do. And it feels good, really good. You put your suit on and you're like, yeah, man, this is, this is what I'm about. Nice new suit. I smell good. I'm going to kill it. I'm going into there. I'm going in there and I'm going to get that job because it's my job because this is my future. And you do all that mentality stuff, right? And you get the job. But what happens if you don't get the job? Then you think, what a waste of my time. I blew it. What did I do wrong? I'm a failure. See, this is where you went wrong. You would have been a failure before all that happened. You would have been lying to yourself. Maybe you put the suit on and you thought, it's a nice looking suit, but it's, I don't like it. I don't feel right. I'm not a suit. Then what are you doing there in the first place? It's important to keep it real, to keep it uh, in sync, in, um, to understand how you feel all the time. I'll get into the really juicy stuff right now. Based on feelings, moving moving forward from faking it till you're making it. Um, there's something that that I found here. The number one thing that that is uh, needed in like in success, and it's got everything to do with your feelings. The trick is to understand and appreciate what your feelings actually are. Feelings are like messages outside time and space. So your feelings are not bound to your created reality, as in, you know, what, what you believe. Out, what you believe, the limits of your, of your world, the limits of what you know, Feelings have nothing to do with, with knowledge. It's sometimes you feel good, sometimes you feel bad. Something happens, good, you're excited about it. Sometimes something unexpectedly bad happens and you feel terrible about it. That's the basics. But sometimes you feel a feeling, a gut feeling, and you don't know why. And you're like, you know, I don't, I don't feel like um, this is right. I don't feel like I should be doing this. I don't feel like I should be going there. I don't feel like I should be involved in this. And uh, you'd be pretty silly not to pay attention to those messages. 
on the other hand, you um, you might experience something and you feel really good about it. Like I've got a really good feeling about this. That job interview went really well. Um, and that is kind of like a little pat on the back, a little recognition of you're on the right track. But by what? Who is giving you that pat on the back? Where does that good feeling come from? It's not just because you feel good. It could be. It could be just because you feel good. But when you understand that we're connected to something bigger than ourselves, irrespective of what you what you personally believe, what I believe, but thinking about we're the only one that's playing you in your body, in your reality, you can be bigger than that. You can connect to a bigger part of yourself outside this reality and literally talk to it or at least hear, at least feel what that bigger part of yourself is saying. And I think really successful people know how they feel about everything. It's like a quick example. The red guy, the white guy, both whispering into in your ear, trying to tell you, you know, whether you should or you shouldn't, whether it's good or it's bad, all that kind of stuff. And what I've realized is that your mind is not your friend. Your thoughts, which are created by your mind, which are held in your brain, apparently, that, that voice in your head, that voice of reason, that guy is not your friend. And I'm going to call it the red guy. Your thoughts. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying that version of you is, is wrong. All right. But just understand that you can't trust your own mind. For example, this little broadcast right now, I could have done this yesterday. I could have done this a little earlier. But the red guy, my mind, is like, Aaron, I don't think you're ready. Maybe you should review your notes. Um, I think you're thirsty. I think you should go eat something right now. I think you should go check what's on television. That's the red guy. That's the voice stopping you from completing what you should do, when you should do it, um, irrespective of whether you're ready or not. On the other side, I've got the white guy over here. Now, that version of me is is my, my gut feeling. That version of me is my, my heart. That version of me, usually it's portrayed in movies, cartoons, television, what have you, as the angel, the, the version of yourself that tells you the right thing to do, that doesn't lie to you, that's honest. That guy is your friend. And for me, that guy really gives me one, you know, one big call. And that is just to do it, just to wing it, just to make it happen irrespective of expectations, irrespective of a, a desired outcome, but just to do it, just to wing it. And the thing is, even if you do it and it turns out bad or it doesn't turn out exactly the way you expected, not that you should have expectations, what happens is you're, you're filled with a satisfaction of completion. Now that is a non-goal attached feeling of satisfaction. That, to me, is what I would consider as feeling of successful, of being you, of winging it, of living your life 
without putting too much expectation, but actually choosing to do stuff, stuff that you want to do. Like I'm not saying do something just for the sake of doing it, irrespective of whether you want to do it or not, but you should be mapping out what you want to do, what you like to do, and then, and then do it without any fear of how that's going to look, how that's going to turn out, or what your friends and family might think of you. Like, really, if I listen to those guys, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. So, just to wrap it up, I think when it comes to being successful, you need to choose to be you. Whatever that version of you turns out to be, you need to then love that. You need to then love that version of you with no expectation, which means no limits, which means complete choice of one, one committed you to create your world because there's one thing you need to remember. You're the only one living your life. So I enjoyed giving you this message. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a comment. Um, if there's any thoughts um, about how I'm possibly wrong, that's good because I probably am. Um, again, leave it in the comments. I'll, I'll get back to you. Maybe we can talk about this stuff. Uh, maybe you can teach me something. I'm always I'm always down for that. Um, and check out the website. We put up a lot of cool stuff up there. Um, again, check out the shirts. If you got some extra cash and you want to throw some value my way, by all means, um, feel free to donate as much or as little as you want to the Paradise Paradox forward slash donate. Or there's a link at the top of the page. Um, other than that, just remember to, to to keep high. You always get a better perspective. You always get a better view. Then you can make better choices. Keep shifting. Peace.